Welcome to another video about Microsoft Access. Today, we're going to talk about the process of debugging. Now, debugging, of course, should occur all the time through the process. Every time you close a form and save it, it's going to check the syntax. It's going to compile. It's going to check each little component as you go through. So debugging is really a, a process as you build your whole application. It's never really left till the end anymore because of the, the way that the system is put together. But there are times when you've got to check a particular module and it needs to function a certain way. You need to check the variables along the way to make sure that the variables are getting the right values and then pushing the right values into your tables and and putting the, outputting the right value to a, a text box on the form so that the user can have input as to maybe some totals on a form or, or information that is calculated in some other way. So what we want to do is, is talk about four methods of debugging that um, exist in Microsoft Access, a couple of them that have been common since Access 1.0, a uh, couple others that have entered the scene later on as the application has become more sophisticated and better able to handle the programming process. So I'm going to open the Access database here. And the first thing I wanted to show you is the two that have existed for the longest period of time, and that is using a message box to output the value of a variable and also using debug.print, which prints values to what they call the immediate window. So let's first look at the message box option. So I'm going to double click on this module down here, and you see in the module here, what it does is it it dimensions several uh, databases. It's going to look at a record set. It's going to open that database. It's going to then define as an SQL string. So what we want to see when we run this is this little piece here is the compilation of a SQL statement. And you see at the, at the end of each line, it has the continuation character, that underscore, that says that really every one of these lines is the same thing, the same line as, as, it very, as the be, very beginning. So what we want to see is, is this going to compile all of these strings together and do the kind of job that it's supposed to? If so, it'll output it to a message box, and that message box will be proof that when you get down here, the SQL statement is completely compiled. That's one way to do it. Let's see if it works. I'll go ahead and hit the run button. And here we get our dialog box. And the dialog box says this SQL variable, uh, select distinct row, uh, order details, product ID, all the way down to in the inner join. And it looks like it may have cut off because it didn't have quite enough space but I do believe we can check to see if it completed with an immediate window because the immediate window is a lot larger. Text box, of course, has a few constraints there, but it looks like we've got, got it working. No reason to believe that after order ID in this order by clause that it didn't just continue and finish it out. In fact, the order by clause might be the last item. So let's go look here and the order by clause was in fact, the last line, so we know that we've got it complete. So that is one way to check your variables and make sure that they output correctly. The other one is to use a debug.print. So let's look at the debug.print version, and everything here is exactly the same, except when we get down here to the debug.print line, it's going to then output it to what they call an immediate window. Now, so what we want to do is we want to go up here to the debug tool view. There we go, immediate window. We're gonna put the immediate window here. Sorry, it took me so long to find it. But the immediate window down here is going to get be the recipient of this information from the debug.print command that, that we have here in the code. So when I click on the run button here, immediately it pops in because code is pretty quick. Notice the immediate window does not wrap, but I can scroll over to the right and see that it's as extended price from an inner join on products ID and order details of product ID and then order by, and here we have the end of the statement here. So 
obviously what we did was output the entire SQL statement here. And that is one way to check your variables. Now, the variables can be checked a little bit more sophisticated than that. In fact, let's go ahead and look, look at this particular module right here, because what, what we've done here is, is we've set a what they call a breakpoint. Now, the breakpoints allow you to stop the execution of the program at any one point. Point, okay, so if I click run here, it'll stop here and it shows you by the fact that it's yellow and it has this little arrow here pointing to the line that it stopped on. So it hasn't actually executed that. Now, notice also that we have a debug.print line down here and nothing appears in the immediate window. So the actual running of this stopped prior to the debug.print. Now, what happens if I hit the run button, it'll continue. And here we get our debug.print. The execution is finished and it hit the end sub and it stopped. So when you need to check particular variables, you can set your stop to stop at a particular point. You can set several of them. I could set one here and one one here, anywhere there is a line. If it's a blank space, it won't let you put one there, but I can set one anytime I have a, a line of code here. Okay, now it recognizes that this is all one line. So it, notice when I clicked on it, it highlighted the entire, uh, the entire line, so to speak, because it's a continuation. Okay, so I can put as many in it. They're as easy as clicking on them, once again, to turn them off. So that's another way to stop the execution of a program so that you can check your variables. Now, let's say you've got a kind of a tricky one and for some reason you're just not getting the data output that you need. So let's look at another way to stop the execution and then look at another way to see that variable. Uh, the last one I want to show you here is uh, using a stop statement. Now, you can go ahead and use here this statement right here. And a stop statement, all it does is say, I'm going to go to that point in the execution of my pr the program, and I'm just going to pause there. And it's going to pause there until I tell it to go again, just like with the uh, breakpoint. So I'm going to delete the value in my immediate window here. And when I hit run here, oh, it didn't know. You have to put your cursor inside the, the run window in order to get it to run. So when I click run, here it stopped just and it's similar in the way it shows you that it stopped by highlighting it in yellow and then if i tell it to continue notice my debug.print co uh, command is right afterwards if i hit continue like this then we get our sql statement here showing that it ended and it went to the end of the function okay now Let's take a look at another way to see all the variables. And this is the last thing that I needed to show you today. So I'm going to go up to my debug menu and I'm going to add a watch. And I'm going to say that I want to watch this S SQL variable here. So I'm going to type in S S Q L and I'm going to click OK. And you'll see that I have a watch window over here. Now remember, because it's dimensioned, it only is live and available as a variable during the execution of this function. So since that's the case, right now it's out of context, meaning it has no value. In fact, it doesn't exist at this point. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and hit the run button. It stops right down here. And while it stopped here, it's already established this SQL variable. And so here it shows the value here. And it's a string variable and it's live. If I click continue on this, it will say now it's out of context because it's finished the function. So this is these are the things, the tools that you can use in order to debug your program. There is the message box output. There is the debug.print output. There's using breakpoints to stop the execution of the code. 
There's putting stop statements in your code so that you can stop the execution of the code. And you can also put a watch on your variables so that you can see the variable as it changes or as it's given values during the execution of your program. So with those tools and a little bit of study, I'm sure you can put those tools to good work and we'll look forward to seeing you later. Thank you. I wanna thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.